today we're going to do this drawing and painting of this uh, goat, demon, guy, woman, creature, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just something that kind of came to me one day. Uh, I had done the skull that you can see above um, a couple days before and was just, I had this new red paint pen that I was playing around with and was really enjoying that and enjoying the palette that I had started using with the, um, the skull above. So I thought I would just start doing some more of that stuff and see where it led. And I had this image and this idea, I think inspired by uh, the Shub Nagarath that HP Lovecraft kind of mentions, but it's this, the, uh, but it's like a goat deity uh, with a thousand goat children or something like that. I'd, I'd have to go back and look at it, but uh, do the research again. But loosely based on that, but basically uh, when I was, I was listening to a podcast that had mentioned it and it just immediately put this picture in my head of this just floating kind of, goat kind of animal creature and that really stuck in my mind uh, that that was probably a couple of months ago that 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 popped into my head and I've just been carrying it around with me and so it finally decided that it wanted out so this drawing and painting is that cleansing that I don't want to say exorcism because that's way too religious and implies that it's a bad creature and I don't necessarily know that that's the case with this so we're just gonna say it's a a cleansing so I'm using a uh, watercolor pencil here it's um the brand is Derwent and someone gave them to me as a gift and I I don't remember why, and I'm sorry if you're listening and you're the one that gave them to me and I don't remember, uh, but I do very much appreciate it. So thank you very much. So I thought that I would try doing the sketches with watercolor pencil, knowing that if I hit it with enough water, it could all just wash away. But I also like the idea of it washing away uh, and then just kind of using colors that I had planned on using in the paint palette anyway. Um, when I sketch with color pencil, like oftentimes you'll see people sketching with the blue color pencil uh, that doesn't get picked up by scanners, uh, but it doesn't wash away uh, when you hit it with a bunch of water, whereas these watercolor pencils are made for that. So I figured it would be ideal for me to be able to kind of kind of loosely block in the idea uh, but get it in enough that I kind of knew what I was painting but then I knew that I could always paint it away you know wash it away with water if I wanted to because I'll be painting this with acrylics um, which are water-based and I like to thin those out and use them as a wash basically where you're use a lot of water to thin it out and make it look like watercolor. So I've got this, obviously this green circle template that I use for a lot of the circles, uh, for the, the sigils and the writing that I do. Um, the sigils and the writing, the sigils being the, the symbols, the larger symbols that you're seeing here, they're all stream of consciousness um, just shapes and lines, characters that just come to me as I'm, as I'm drawing. So I just kind of let those come out. And I have, I have a sense of what they're supposed to look like as I'm drawing them. And I can kind of tell like if I'm going in the wrong direction with a line or with a circle within either 
within a circle or within the piece. It just doesn't quite feel right. So I won't try to force it to work. I'll just keep kind of working it around in my head and using the stencil until it feels right. And then I'll block it in. So here I've used the, the red color pencil to block in the red writing and sigils. It, I apologize for the quality getting a little bit worse here. I was live streaming this using Facebook. Uh, that was that was the pens <laughs> that were just on the screen. That's what I was using. But I was live streaming streaming it with Facebook, and it kind of got messed up and compressed somehow, so the quality is not quite as good. Um, so I apologize for that. But so I'm using this water-based brush uh, paint pen for the lettering, the lines, the sigils, all, you know, all the strange writing. Um, knowing that it's water-based, knowing that once water hits it, it it's going to run and spread. Um, I wasn't uh, prepared for how much it would spread, which was actually a really nice surprise. Uh, once the water hits it, it really just starts to run. So I had to be conscious of that and how much I wanted to wash out uh, while I was painting. So that was a fun learning curve and it's fun trying to control something that you can't control uh, and just knowing that it's semi-controlled chaos so it's always going to do whatever it wants to do you know you can just kind of be working around the edges and try to coerce it a little but ultimately it creates itself which is pretty cool to me so I've, here I think I've got, yeah, I've got all the red blocked in. Um, situate the bugs. And yeah, and then I, I moved the palette over a little bit so you guys could kind of see. Um, just, I don't know, what I do <laughs> with the paints, I guess. Um, so th that is a white, I, I, Put down two different types of white. There's a uh, a titanium was the one that I ended up. Um, actually, I don't think I used either white. Uh, that was kind of a waste of paint. But the titanium is a bit more opaque, and I thought I was going to need that, but it ended up that I didn't really need it. Uh, so I've got a few different color blues there, and a couple different reds. Uh, I, got, I really wanted to kind of stick to a fairly limited palette. Um, got, I, I like the simplicity of it when when the palette's limited. Um, it, and it forces me to be more creative with, with what I have and then try to figure out ways to um, solve some of the problems later um, with the ink, like with the pens and with the the brush, but with the, the micron pens. So basically with pen and ink, um, filling in the details. So here I'm just kind of going in with a, a light wash of the, the lighter blue and just blocking in some shapes and already, you know, kind of playing with the reds and getting those to bleed a little bit, seeing what they do. Um, uh, that part of the fun is just, hitting it with paint and water and seeing what happens like as you can see I'm not I'm not controlling where this red is going it's it's taken on a life of its own now that it's on the page and now that it's met the creature so they're doing their own thing I'm just kind of painting around uh, mixing in some more some purple so some alizarin crimson and um, some phthalo blue most likely I think that's what I was using uh, just getting some purple and then um, so I'll, yeah oftentimes I'll start with the light wash and kind of see where some highlights are and then I'll go back and start blocking in what are going to be shadows 
and just starting to build that up a little bit. So like right here, you can see that I'm building up the back of this creature's robe. So that would be the torn part that's actually behind his arm. It, you'll be able to tell a little better as um, the painting progresses. But so I, yeah, so he, he or she, it has this cloak that it's wearing that I wanted to look kind of like it was a cloak of royalty at, at one time, but now it's just tattered and falling apart, but it still wears it. You know, I don't know if it's because it's holding on to it or holding on to a memory of what it used to be, or if it's just been around so long, it, it just wears this and doesn't care. I don't know. It's just the creature doing its thing. And you can see that I was splashing a little bit of water and here I'm blocking in a little bit of the colors or the corners, excuse me. Um, it's kind of subtle right now and it might be a little bit hard to tell in the video, but once the, the tape gets pulled away, uh, it's pretty obvious where the corners will be, even though the wash that I put down is pretty subtle. So that was a gold paint that I was just showing. That's going to be for down the center of the robe as if it were trimmed in gold at some point and now it's again just kind of tattered and ripped up. You can see I've got some water splashed up near the top um, just for some texture and I'll continue to do that with this piece and with a lot of my pieces but especially this series that I'm doing right now um, I kind of like the look of this so I'm gonna gonna stick with this for a little while until I get bored and then I'll I don't know I'll move on to something else and there are still gosh pages that I need uh, to finish up that are halfway done or sketched and need to be inked and painted but so here I'm blocking in some more details you can see it's kind of starting to come together a bit Yeah, I'm uh, working on a little bit more detail, more shadow, getting some of the, the lines of the robe blocked in a little bit more, just so I can kind of tell where I need to go next. Working in some, some mid-tones with some purples. You can see purple starting to build up uh, in the, the robe. And one of the things I liked about this is that even though I'm using a lot of blues for the skin and the robe um, because the red is bleeding into it it's still looking pretty purple so uh, uh, I, I like that and so yeah unfortunately the video that I had uh, it crapped out on me that the Facebook one I was telling you about but you didn't you didn't miss much um, I think I just did a little bit more um, wash in a little bit and then the trees at the bottom. Um, so here I've got this pen, this brush pen that I've filled up with ink that I'm using to start to do the outlines uh, here and there, but still, you know, kind of keeping it loose. Um, one of the things I like about these brush pens but I also don't like about them is they're bristles so the bristles can spread or one can get longer and throw off your line or they can start to fray so just another organic piece that could go wrong or mess things up for you and then that just becomes a, a part of the painting and you just I don't know you deal with it <laughs> with I suppose you could probably fix it if you tried hard enough or depending on what medium you're using, but when it's stuff like this, um, with these, I, I kind of want them to look like they were done possibly in haste or from memory or just loosely. So if everything's not super clean, I, I feel like that's okay and, and works and possibly even helps the piece. So here I think I'm getting some greens. Um, yeah, uh, I think that was hooker's green. 
and then there was a, a brighter green that I had. So I'm actually going to um, mix the two a little bit. And then I think I pulled in a tiny bit of the purple um, just to start to build the trees up, just give them a little bit more body so you can kind of tell what they are a little bit more because right now they're they're kind of washed out so I wanted to build that up so it was a little more obvious that there are trees in the background I wanted the, the creature to kind of seem like it was above the tree line um, so just getting some of that built in a little bit more so it's a little more obvious um, that it's forest and here pushing some of that green in especially in the shadows and the the underside of the creature um, just for the reflective light and to pull pull everything together a little bit better um, the the green the trees would be reflecting up onto this creature if you if it were actually above them or, you know, kind of within them. So throwing the green on there as like a, a bounce light basically uh, will bring these two things together more. The creature and the trees kind of brings the piece together more. I'm kind of doing the same thing here that there's, I'm using a really um, washed out brush but still has green on it. Uh, up in the corners there. That was what I was doing there to kind of bring the green around the piece some more um, to close it in a little bit and bring it together. And here this is something I've just basically I'm getting the paint the brush wet with this bluish green and just spattering it on and you know you just hope for the best it's gonna fall where it falls. And, uh, the, you know, you, I suppose you can control it by trying to soak it up really quickly, but like there's not much control that you have once you just start tossing paint and water on there because it's it's just kind of there and it's random. Uh, and I, I really like that. Just having this randomness in the work that I don't even really have control over other than the fact that I was the one holding the brush. So here I'm back with the Micron pen, or probably several of them. Um, cleaning up some lines, adding in some detail, some hatching, and probably a little bit of cross hatching going on, but mostly just some hatching in, in the creases, you know, just some really short, quick lines, just to add some more detail and to give it a little more depth um, beyond what I had done with the paint. So still adding in more detail using the paper towel over top and under my hand so I don't smudge things too much but I think at this point it's it's probably safe but I, I, I don't want to smudge it because because it's my baby. Don't smudge your baby. It's a quote of the day. And so here, just working in a lot more details, which you can't see it here as much, uh, but in the final photos, you can see um, the details in the, the robe and in the, the horns, ant I guess they're horns, not antlers. And there I just added it gosh alphabet type tattoo around its arm just to keep it in the world in the the gosh world and in the art muffin world all right so that's all i got for you i hope you liked it uh, if you have questions please feel free to post them and thanks for watching thanks uh for supporting me on Patreon. Uh, thanks for following my my work. Um, it, it, it really means a lot and it really keeps me going, keeps me motivated. So thank you very much for doing that. And 
if you're not following me on Instagram, I'm on Instagram. Um, it's hashtag artmuffin underscore studio. Uh, my website's artmuffin.com. I'm on Facebook, facebook.com slash artmuffinstudio. I'm around. You can find me. But thanks again for watching. I hope you liked it. And I will talk to you soon. Thank you.